Hey guys, it's Tark with Cyclone FPV, and today we're going to be working on a uh, diatone, and we're uh, this is the uh, the uh, stretched uh, frame. And uh, let me see, let me get some of this paperwork out of the way here, so I can tell you guys exactly what we're going to be doing. Uh, it's set up for the um, I'm going to be adding a ViFly finder to it, the finder two, and then I'm going to be adding a Radio Link uh, receiver to it so that we can bind it with the Radio Link. Sorry, I'm looking over here trying to get some things uh, adjusted. So we're working on the diatone, what is this, the GT200S, the 2017 stretched version, and I will show you from a top view here in just a second uh, what we're talking about, and hopefully if any of this can help you guys with the build that you're working on, great. So um, we've got to add the radio link to it, and we've got to add our buzzer to it, and here's what I'm going to do this time, is I'm actually going to use our website to show you guys some of the things that we're doing on that forum. I know a forum is kind of an old school way of doing things, but... I think it's going to be a lot more helpful for me to keep up with things for you guys, and uh, and hopefully you can use the resources that are on there. Uh, I know I'm way behind in comparison to where everybody else is at with forums and stuff, but uh, it's at least going to keep things a little more organized for me. So um, I'm going to actually put the PC screen on here right now, and I'll uh, actually I'll do a swap here. There we go. So in the bottom right corner there, you see the PC screen, and uh, let's see. So one of the things I did is we're going to do this as if you guys are doing it at home and uh, going to walk through it the same way together and use the manuals. And this way we can all kind of figure out what would normally be done. And if you have any questions, then feel free to ask me. First thing is we're going to go ahead and remove the side panels on this diatone because we need to get to the flight controller uh, and, uh, and uh, make sure that we uh, get the uh, wiring harnesses put in. Sorry, I'm kind of I got a lot of things to get done today and I am just now trying to get my thoughts together here. All right, so we're working on the Fury board. Um, and so let me just go ahead and take the top off here, the sides off here. And so we're working on the F3S, right? And uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the website real quick and I'm gonna show you where we're gonna go. We're gonna go to a forum. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down. I've put headings on all these things. There's a lot of categories here, but it's because they're done by uh, manufacturer and then by part. So if you have a manufacturer you need help with or a part you need help with and you don't see it listed here, just uh, hit me up in an email. Just go to the uh, contact link. Uh, where is that? I think it's under support. And then you can go to contact us and just let me know and I'll add it, okay? Uh, because we have a ton of these in stock and I'm moving all the videos over to this. So a lot of these will be filled up with product, uh, with information. But right now they are, um, I'm still in the process of getting it done. But I did add the uh, radio link and the um, diatone uh, to this uh, page. So let me find the diatone first. So let's look at what we've got here. Now this is going to show us the link so that you can get to the manual uh, from my page so you don't have to go searching around for it. So here's the link to the manual. It's going to open up and there we go, All right? All right, so what we're looking at right now is the way this is going to be positioned. Uh, it's going to be positioned, the board is looking at us as if, uh, no, just like that, okay? So we've got our USB here and you can see on the page it's right here. And we're going to look at the pins and everything else. Now I do need to take the camera off too because I've got to get in there, so let me see. Let me get that out as well, and let's get to rocking on this thing, okay? Because we've got to get the buzzer put in, and I want to make sure that we have everything ready to go. Oops. All right. All right. There's one screw, and now we'll get the other one out, and we'll be good to go. Okay. Just go ahead and take this bottom one out too because the camera's kind of wedged in there pretty good so let me just take one side out and i should be able to get the camera there we go all right so uh we're gonna go ahead and disconnect that real quick and i'm gonna see what they've left us in the harness here so um this harness is going to match basically where we're at right now and so you can see on the pattern here that we are dealing with uh we've got our two cables here for our buzzer then we've got our video <clears throat> which is on this side. So if you're looking at this screen here, we're following the black line right here, right? So we've got our buzzer plus and minus and we've got our video in uh, Which is gonna be the yellow cable uh, Let me get that better on the screen and so forth So this actually this harness does nothing needs to happen with it But we still have to look at what we're doing for the receiver So the receiver is gonna need the harness on the right hand side So we're gonna find that harness real quick and it's gonna be right here They've labeled it pretty well for us. So we're gonna go ahead and use that and what we do know is if you look at the pins on this, uh, they're actually on the top. So if we line this up on the top and we go, 
we should have ground first, like it says on the screen. We should have five volt next. And then the next one is PPM. And uh, the next one is gonna be S bus. So we're just gonna take this sticker off because it's kind of getting in my way. All right, so if you look at the diagram, you got ground, which is black, that's right. And then you got five volt, which is red, that's right. PPM we're not gonna be using, we're gonna be using S bus. So we might as well go ahead and get rid of the excess wires. And so to do that, bear with me a second. I don't want this to get in your way, uh, but I do need to look through here so I can see properly. And let me go ahead and just pop that, lift that tab up. So, I mean, if you wanna do that, um, what you're gonna do is basically, uh, you're gonna lift this tab up. And I'm wondering if I can zoom in here for you. Okay, so just get a sharp tool. Sorry, my hands are all nasty with carbon fiber. I've been cutting frames all day. Uh, and just go to the third tab and prop it up uh, softly. Now, I gotta look under here real quick. One, two, three. Okay, and so let me show you what I'm doing here. So we're gonna take the third red wire out, or it's kind of a discolor, no, it's about red. One, two, we're gonna pop this one up just enough. Uh, you don't wanna go too much here, you wanna just get it enough to get, because you wanna save the tab. And so the wire's gonna come out, and I would save that, because if you ever wanna use it, you just pop it right back in there. Uh, you don't have to lift the tab back up, just pop it in, you've got yourself your connection again. And the last is for a 3.3 volt, and we're not gonna be using that, so let's go ahead and pop that one up too and just get rid of it, okay? So now look, save these save these wires, okay? And as a matter of fact, save your label as well if you want. Uh, mine went flying over here somewhere. They do give you a couple, I guess. I didn't even notice that, but they do give you a couple. So, uh, but I am gonna save these. Uh, these actually go back to the customer and I wanna make sure that he's got everything he needs. All right, with that said, we can go ahead and plug this in. Now, the receiver from Radio Link actually has the pins already on it. So I'm just gonna start twisting this up because this is gonna be a very, uh, very standard plug and play style. Um, and so if we're looking at the radio link, right? And uh, let me see something here just real quickly. Uh, we are, yeah, so that's the uh, the R6, uh, uh, R6DS. Sorry, I just wanna make sure I got the model number right when I told y'all. Uh, so looking at this, ground is to the left and, uh, oh, I've zoomed in too much, my apologies. So ground is gonna be to the left here. Uh, if you're looking at it with the, um, with the antenna up, ground is to the left, S bus is to the right, so five volts is gonna be in the middle. So all you're gonna do is take black to the left, five volt red to the middle, and S bus uh, to the end there with the white cable, okay? Now, um, so with that being done, the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is find a good mounting spot for this, and I am not, uh, I am, Okay with placing it here a little bit. Uh, I'm probably gonna put some padding right here or something or try to find a little bit more of a comfortable spot, but we'll see in just a little bit, all right? Because it's definitely gonna take up some room and I'm not gonna take the pins off just yet unless I feel that there's a need to. Now, as far as the buzzer goes, let's go ahead and open the, Vi the ViFly Finder 2. And there are multiple ways to connect this. So we're gonna make sure that we follow the method that we need the, that matches the, um, the uh, pin out here. So. Let's first of all get this out, and then let's go ahead and grab the manual, and you guys can watch with me on this. All right, so they're going to tell you there's a few ways to install this, so just pay attention to this real quick, okay? And the wiring diagram is pretty simple. It's telling you that if you have a ground, a buzzer positive, and a buzzer ground, then this is how you're going to wire it. Uh, if you have a ground, a 5-volt, or a VCC, and a PWM, this is how you'll do it. And if you're going to do it... Uh, with um, uh, this type of wiring where you have a ground of five volt and a buzzer uh, and you don't have a designated buzzer positive, then this is how you do it. However, we're working with this one right here. So in this case, we're gonna be going ground and our wiring is gonna look similar. Now, if this is gonna fit, it would be really nice and we're gonna find out real quickly if it does, but if not, we'll make it, we'll splice them and make it work. Um, so we're gonna go ground black, buzzer positive red and buzzer ground yellow, okay? So looking at our harness here, uh, pins are down, which means that this plug is gonna plug in like this. Now, these two plugs uh, use the same size uh, wiring, so I can at least jump off. If I can find, uh, I'm gonna tap into the ground on the system itself. So you, can be, you need to be very careful, but what you can do is you can go ahead and you can pull out, just like we did with the other pins, you can pop this here, and pop the next one gently and pull out and make sure that you know uh, the way that they get inserted because you're gonna wanna make sure that you do that properly. 
Uh, and if you're not comfortable with this, then you can always splice the wires or uh, do another method, but I'm okay with doing this. Although watch me screw this up. Okay, so if you look at how it came out, with the tabs up, and I want you to take note of this, okay? Because I don't know how else to describe it to you, but with the tabs up, um, this, if you look at this wire, it's almost like the letter P if you stood it up, right? So it's got the long arm and then the top there that would be round like the letter P. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I can put a white background on there to show you, okay? So um, what we want to do is we know that this goes in. Uh, here, let me do it this way because I'm not making any sense out of this for you guys, and I apologize. All right. So the wire is shaped like this. The connection is shaped like this. This is going to be my awesome artsy abilities here. So um, the plug that we just pulled out of has two tabs, right? And we lifted both of them, okay? The wire that came out would look like this, meaning it's going to go in with this piece down, all right? So the flat piece is going to go up facing these tabs, okay? So to make sense of that, because that's how it's going to snap right in there, so what we want to do is we want to grab <clears throat> the harness uh, that came with the ViFly, and we want to say, okay, we've got the ground out. So now we want to go ahead and take the ground out of here, and we're just going to use the ground from the flight controller to make it work, okay? So um, uh, we're going to use the buzzer ground, which is actually going to be the yellow ground, and we're going to replace it with a, the black ground cable. So gently pop up the yellow tab, Pop it up a little bit more than I did. One second. And you kind of can see, I hope this is, yeah, it will fit. Okay. So you're basically just going to insert this back in the way it came out, just like that, and press that tab back down, and it'll pop in place, and you're good to go. Now, that is your buzzer ground right there. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that's in properly, and it is. Now we have the buzzer positive, right? The five volts. So we're going to go ahead and pop the middle tab up. This is the tricky one to get to. All right, and we're going to take that one out, if I can get it, and we're gonna put in the red from here. Now, if you do break a tab, don't worry about it. You can hot glue over it and you'll be just fine, but just try to be careful, okay? So pop that one in the same way and you're done. We now have put in the tabs, or put in the wires from the flight controller, and we don't need to splice anything or do anything else. The only thing left that we need to do is find a ground to attach the ViFly ground to. So I'm gonna look here. I'm gonna see what I find for ground. And let me see. I think what I'll do, hmm. There is a ground on the uh, top of the controller here, on top of the flight controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and Get my flux pen, get it ready, and I've got my soldering iron on. Everything's cleaned up, I think, but let me go ahead and go back over it real quick. Okay, and let me get some solder. There we go. And you're going to have to forgive me a second because I've got to use the blind man stuff here. So you're going to see this thing in your face for just a second, but let me just drop this on the pad real quick. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the tweezers and put that on the ground. And I think if you guys can see through that, you're gonna see what I'm doing right here. There you go. So this is the ground that I'm working on right here. And I've put the solder on it, and now I'm just gonna take this wire. As a matter of fact, if I can do that while y'all are looking, that may work. So can you see that? Uh, I guess you can. It's a little bit of a glare, but uh, this way I could just look through the top of it and not really get in your way. All right, so I'm just gonna take the ground real quick. And now it's a very long ground, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. So let me just do that real quick here. And I'm going to now pay attention because that piece fell right there. So we're just going to make sure that that comes off before we power up the board. And I am going to go ahead and just attach it very quickly to the ground on the board. And it should take about a second or less. Uh, and there we go. So ground is attached. So now if we were to test this, and I will zoom in here so you can see it, um, this is where I attach the ground. Now it's a little blurry, but there you go. And that's where it's going to sit, okay? So now our ViFly should be ready to go. 
All right. So let me wind that up. And we'll wait to plug that in. And we have our receiver ready to go as well. And so now all we have to do is put everything back together and put the camera back in and make sure that we are good on this. Now I'm gonna wait because I wanna hot glue that pad real quick. So let me see if I can get this glue gun out of the way. Let's see, ooh, that's hot. Okay. I still got a little bit to go. So let me just kind of start prepping this up and getting rid of the trash. All right. We've got our camera here. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that back in. These wires are not being used right now. We'll just go ahead and... These ones aren't. Let me just go ahead and line that up. camera back in. We find where I put the camera screws, which need to be around here somewhere. Here's one. Let me get that one in. Okay. Now I can go ahead and tighten the bottom piece. Let me see what I did wrong here. My bad, my bad. No, actually I think that's right. You see? Put it on backwards, but I didn't. Find the next camera screw. It's right here. Get it lined up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, camera's back in. Everything's good there. The wires are in good. And I think our glue gun's ready to go. So let me just go ahead now and hit this one time like this. Uh, it still has a little bit more to go. So I may just, I'll have to see. I may hit the heat gun on it just to make sure. Um, and then let's make sure our tabs and our wires are in okay, which they appear to be. Don't see any problem there. And so now we can get ready to put this back on and kind of start figuring out where we're gonna put the receiver and uh, the, uh, uh, Vifly. Okay, so the Vifly, I think, based on the last diatone that I did for this customer, we're going to put the Vifly like right here. All right, it was a pretty good fit. Uh, there was no, there's no problems with it at all. Given that the wires are in the back now, I guess I could fit it somewhere here and uh, kind of zip tie it here to the side, but I still have to find a spot for my receiver. So on my receiver, um, I may just find a way to tuck it underneath. So for this, I may go this route. Let me get a piece of tape. And my scissors. Well, I'm still zoomed in, I apologize. I gotta do better about this. Okay. Move these wires out of the way a little bit. Get our pad right there. All right, and just remove the tape, the, the, the other side of the tape so that we can use the double-sided tape and make this work properly, okay? Now, I think we'll have enough room, uh, but actually, I might be wrong. Hmm, well, I don't want to remove the pins because this is not my quad. Let me see if I can 
Let me see if I can manipulate this somehow to work without having to move, remove the pins if I don't have to, which should still not be a problem. do that. What about if I come in like this? Because there's room in the back. Nope, don't want to do that either. Ah, man. <sighs> nope. Well, I tell you what. Well, let's see if we can bend them, and if they snap, then I know I'll have to replace them, but if not, then we might be good. Nope. The idea is that if I don't have to take them off, I'm not going to. I still have full movement on my camera now. The one thing I have to see is can I clear this? And it looks like I can, so that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, I do see that my ground has, one of the grounds has come out on the ViFly, so I have to check the tab there. So let me do that real quick and see why. Maybe I didn't press that tab down hard enough. To be safe, I will put some hot glue right there. There we go. As it burns my fingers, we know it's working. So we'll let that sit a minute. Okay, our receiver is now in. Uh, our camera has full movement, so we're not interfering with that. So that's good. And I oh, forgot the hot glue is still. one again and this time I'll have to pay better attention going to kind of get my finger out of the way and just let it kind of cool let that glue harden there and dry and in the meantime uh, we can go ahead and make sure that we get our receiver bound so here's the radio link let me zoom out here's our radio link radio I've already set it up to copy to mode 2 and to do that I just went to press mode and I went to model selection selection because I know that this customer likes the way his model is set up on on number one channel one so i did it and then i went to copy and it said basically copy one to two when i did so then here's two and <clears throat> all we're going to do now is we are going to uh, get this turned off and oh by the way i did want to show you the link here um just like we have for the diatone i did add uh for the radio link so if you go to radio link uh somewhere down here there it is, and you find the R6DSM, and right there what I did is I added the link for it, so you can just, like I said, go to our site, it's there, it's already on our site, you're not being taken in, oh no, this one actually, sorry, you are being taken because it's not a manual, it's an actual link to their site. So here's where you can find everything, and it tells you about the colors and how the LED, depending on how it, um, uh, the color that it blinks, it lets you know if you're in S bus or if you're in uh, PPM. All right, so, uh, it says basically turn on the transmitter and then uh, turn then power on the, uh, the receiver. So let's go ahead and turn on the transmitter and let's get the uh, XT60 uh, plug in here for the receiver. And uh, then you will turn on the receiver and then um, you will go ahead and power it up. And like it says, you will... Uh, Right here it says you'll press, press the black button, which is right here on the side, twice in two seconds. Uh, one, two, and let go. And we are going to wait for the uh, radio to uh, bind, I believe. Let me make sure I got that right. And let me make sure that I'm right with it. No, I just switched it to PPM. Sorry, I hate when I do this. And I now it should be going back to S bus. 
I am hoping. So that did not do it. I think I switched it to PPM. I apologize. Let me try that again. There we go. Okay. Well, I tell you what, I am doing exactly what it says here, so I must be doing something. I must be missing it. Turn on the transmitter, it is. Then power on the receiver, it is. There's a black button on the thing. Press the binding button twice in two seconds. Okay. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm sitting here, and I am doing this a screwed up way. My apologies. One second, please. As I am thinking about <clears throat> messing this up, which is what I'm doing, so bear with me a second and let me make sure that I am set here. I can't see it, that's the problem. this down worth a darn and now we should be bound and we can test that by turning off the radio and it should report back to us hopefully that we have lost signal so let me make sure we have our telemetry up here and we have full signal up here whoops I need to go ahead and get this thing yeah 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 yeah. Hold on. all right so now that that's done we're gonna go ahead and plug this into beta flight sorry about that guys I meant to I'm supposed to hold the button the instructions on here do not uh, make sense what it's saying from what I'm seeing is totally different uh, than what I did to bind it and I don't know why I've bound these before and, and I this time let it get the best of me but let me go ahead and just get this logged in and then let me go ahead and power this off real quick this way the VTX can take a break okay now we're going to go ahead and get into beta flight and connect some point it is an f3 controller so it may run a little slow but let's go here we go so let's calibrate the accelerometer oh, I'm trying to use a mouse on this pad is not working that good all right so now we're going to go to ports i think it's going to be uart1 so we're going to go ahead and save that and we're going to go to our receiver or sorry we're going to go to our configuration tab and we're going to go ahead and tell it that we want to use sbus uh, if it can hurry up let's try that again it moved a little slow Come on. Okay, so we're gonna go to the configuration tab. At some point it will open. And uh, everything else is set. And we are gonna go ahead and drop this down to serial based. And then we're gonna go to SBUS, it's already there, and click save and reboot. And now let's see if we get under receiver. Let's see if port one was it. Oh. And we wait. And we wait. Try it again. Put the scissors up now. Yeah, so the instructions on the site, and I don't know why I was just sitting there reading them, but the instructions on the site say to press it twice very quickly. At least that's what I read. I will switch back here and see because it says right here how to match the code with the transmitter. Place the transmitter receiver, turn it on, press the black button on the stick. Press, there's a black button on the thing, thing. Press the binding button twice in two seconds and release. Receiver, right? Sorry, no. Okay, so that's not what I did. I ended up holding it down. When I pressed it quickly, it switched it from PPM to SBUS. So I, I'm not sure if either my pressing and their pressing is two different things or what. But we're going to go to receiver now, and let's see if we have anything here. Let's go to our configuration, make sure it's in place. It is. All right, so we do have SBUS, and we do have a receiver, but I don't see any movement. So let me go to my ports. I believe it would be UART1, but we'll try UART2 and then maybe UART3. Come on. This drives me crazy. Hold on. 
and I'll put some notes on this <clears throat> for uh, uh, what the setting should be. It'll be posted on the forum, but let me just go and see where we're at and make sure it even took. So ports, UART2 is not getting me anything, so let me go to UART3. We should be in SBUS. Oh, you know what? I should have checked real quick. So SBUS is purple and blue. Yeah, so um, I don't know why it's giving me a hard time, but let's see if we can get it on UART3 maybe. And every time we do this, we have to disconnect because it's not loading, so let me do that. And let me find my coffee. Perfect, all right, now let's see, do we have it now? There we go, so we have everything set the way we wanted, and it uh, looks like we're good to go. Uh, so now on our modes, let me see, what would he, that looks good. So he's got auxiliary one with arm and anti-gravity. I gotta find out what he used for auxiliary one. There it is. Uh, okay, so we're gonna leave it like that and we can adjust it later. Um, but that should wrap it up for him. And that's it, guys. So now what we're gonna do is get ready to put everything back together. So let me turn this off. We know we're bound. Uh, I'll reach out to the customer and see how he wants to handle that part of it. But um, so we're bound. We're gonna go ahead and unplug our XT60 now. And so it is come, it is, uh, it is, uh, uh, port, uh, sorry, UART3, by the way. So I believe that's where it was, right? I think I meant UART3. So it's going to be UART3 for SBUS. I'll put that in my notes. As a matter of fact, I'll just add it to the website right now. Um, so let me go ahead and just go new topic. Uh, and I'll move this real quick because I want to start keeping this up to date for you guys. So let's do new topic. And, oh, I need to sign in. And this way we can always have some updated notes. Let's go forum. And then we're going to go to our um, radio link. Radio link, R6DSM receiver. And we're going to say new topic. And we're going to do SBUS connection. I don't know, it's capital. I think it's like this. I don't know. That doesn't look right. What is it? Is it S bus with a capital? A? Oh, it's all caps. Okay, never mind. S bus connection instructions, and it'll say make sure to make sure that you use UART three for your S bus connection, and then configure it in the configuration tab. Configuration tab. To my gosh, have S bus uh, as the protocol for your receiver. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so there's a note there, and at least you can see it that way. Um, and so that's how easy this form is going to be. And now let's get that out of the way and get back to here, so we can add the frame back on, put the sides back on, and put our ViFly in and call it a day. Okay, so here's what we're going to work with. We're going to go ahead and put the sides on here. And I want this cable to come up. We'll put the sides on just like that. There we go. Drop that down. Should give us enough room. And we should see some activity here in just a minute. All right. So now we want to test that before I close it up, right? So let's go ahead and just plug in our XT60 again. Okay. We'll power it up. All right, now we're gonna turn it off. And there's our buzzer. And it should beep. I know the battery's dead a little bit, so I'm gonna actually let it charge for, oh, I'll try. Can't let this thing cook. But um, we are going to, I guess we can just, let me see the best way to do this. I mean, this thing fits pretty good either way, so. Let me just go ahead and do this and bring, maybe if I do it this way, I can bring the zip tie from that side. All right, so let's turn it off now. Ooh, that's the, that's the buzzer right there. Hopefully it's got enough power in it. No, the battery still needs to charge, so. Um, but it does look like it's good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and just find a way to mount it properly and we should be set. zip tie here Let's see if I can feed it right between the 
wires. Yep. And we'll zip tie the first part. And then we'll come in with another zip tie, which I can't find right now, so let me go grab some. Oh, where did I put them? Actually, I think they're under here. Bear with me a second. A million zip ties, so let me just grab one. Now, if he's going to put a GoPro on, we could find another way to put this, uh, but since that's not an issue right now, uh, I'm going to match the way his other uh, diatome looks. Okay, so this way uh, we'll keep everything as consistent as possible. We go ahead and bring this up. this to sit like that so I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of glue around the edge here all right and just a little bit more right along the edges here this will give us a nice solid connection and we should be good to go well as soon as that cools off as soon as it's all dry we'll clean up the little stringies here and now let's just go ahead and close the frame up and we will test this again here in just a second. Okay, everything looks good there. And the only thing I have left to do is just put an antenna zip tie and we'll aim it up. So let's just run our zip tie through. Send it through here. Okay, and here we go. Unlimited on colors that are going to be long enough to cover the antenna, so it's going to be red or yellow, and I think I'm just going to go with yellow. And I have probably the worst taste when it comes to matching colors, so sorry, Bobby, uh, not my fault. Uh, all right, so let's get this to here and see how much we need. Uh, we'll take about this much. Okay, let's go ahead and feed it through. There we go. Now we're just going to heat shrink that, have it curve in just a little bit, and we should be good to go. There we go. As soon as we do this, we can start giving it, it becomes a little bit more pliable, so we could just do that. And we are good to go there. All right. So that pretty much wraps it up. Now, if we want to, we can plug in that XT60 again. Maybe try to give it a little bit of time. And let's see what we get. I'd like this battery to get activated, but uh, it doesn't come charged really. It doesn't have very much power to it. So let me go ahead and just make sure that we have a good solid. Bobby likes to fly hard. That's for sure. And I'll clean that up here, but I need it to dry first and cool down. All right. Now.
There we go. And so then you can just press this for three seconds. Oops. One, two, three. And there you go. It's deactivated. So perfect. So everything is set now and we're good to go. So um, I think the only thing left to do might be to set up. You know what? I'm going to send him this PDB as well. I think that'll help. All right, guys. So that's pretty much it. So we've got the uh, ViFly on here. I'll clean this part up here and then get it boxed up. Uh, we also have the uh, uh, transmitter down here and everything looks pretty good. So we should be good to go. If you have any questions, guys, <coughs> let me know. <clears throat> Sorry. It was a pretty simple install, but I wanted to do it using the manuals because I think that's better to just kind of go over what you guys would be looking at too. Uh, so there it is right there. Everything looks good, brand new, and uh, it's ready to fly. I'll just clean up some of this glue off of here, and we have ourselves a good quad. All right, guys, y'all take it easy, and we'll talk to you soon. If you have any questions, hit me up at targetcyclingfpv.com. Please uh, subscribe to our channel. I'm trying to do my best to grow the YouTube channel right now, and I could use your help. I'm also giving daily prizes away, so, you know, subscribe. See when we do the contest, and every day you can try to win something. All right, guys, God bless. Safe flying. Talk to you soon. Bye.